Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Emma and today I wanted to do something a little bit different and um, make a focus on one project and take you with me through the whole process of it. Um, so I wanted to knit the double toffler from Sunnex Gown for I think at least two years and so I finally got around to it and so I thought that since I think a lot of people are um, knitting them uh, at the moment and that it's a little bit different, it's not just knitting, there's a felting part too. I thought that um, it could be interesting to take you with me through this process and see how it goes. Um, this is the first time for me felting some wool, so uh, it's gonna be a discovery for me. And so, um, yeah, I'm gonna take some footage along the way and see how it goes and see if you're interested to, uh, to have this video. But um, yeah, so I went to my local yarn shop to buy some yarn uh, because I didn't have any that was that had the right um, uh, that was um, big enough I have smaller yarn like thinner yarn so um, I put this one and this is nipple from drops I don't have any tag uh, none of the balls I, I put four of them uh, but none of the balls had any tag but I don't really mind um, and this, I'll put the the name of the color um, down below on on the screen. But this is like a forest green. Um, I don't. I think they have two greens, but uh, yeah, this is the one that has a lot of different shades in it. And so I've got four balls. I'm going to knit the size 36, 37, and see how it goes. My feet are a little smaller than 36, so I'll see if it's too big or not. So let's start. I finished the first part of the slippers, so I wanted to show you how it looks like. So this is the part that is going to go around um, the back of the foot. And that we are going to I'm going to show you on the one that is finished. That's the one that the pond that's going to go around the, the hill. So that's the top part here before we separate for um, the two part of the of the foot. So as you can see I did a Judy's Magic cast on for the top part here to close it so I don't have to sew it at the end. And now the next step is to 
um, separate uh, in half. So I'm going to knit the first foot and I knit 25 round, 23 rounds instead of 25. So the, the hole, the opening here, when it's folded here, the opening here is a little smaller. So my foot will um, be held a little bit better inside. So now the pattern tells me to separate, um, to knit the two fit and I should knit the first part and knit, and then put the other half on hold. But since I did a Judy's Magic cast on, as you can see here, I'm going to have to modify a little bit um, the, uh, the pattern. So instead of knitting the first part, all the stitches here on the first needle, I'm going to knit half of them, then put the, the other half on hold, turn, put the first half on hold, and then continue here. Then cast on the stitches and then continue here. Um, in the size I'm making, so 36, 37, I have to cast on five stitches. And so that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to continue on this first part here in the round. Um, and then I'm going to do the second half. So I'm going to show you how I do it. And I'm going to film um, the my knitting so you can follow what I'm doing and um, and I'll show the rest a bit later. As you can see, I put a stitch marker two stitches before I cast on the new stitches as it is written in the pattern. And now I can cast on the five stitches for my size. Now I'm knitting six rows as indicated in the pattern for my size. And then I will start the, the decreases for the instep. So I'm just going to continue knitting in the round for those six rows. And then I'll see you when I'm done with those rows. I'm on my last round. And then I'm going to do the decrease. So I stop at the stitch marker as it is written. I slip it. Then I have to knit one and then I'm doing the first decrease. So I'm supposed to knit two together twice but to have symmetrical decreases, I'm doing slip slip knit and then I'm going to do knit to top. So first decrease, then I'm knitting three as it is written for my size. And then knitting two together. And I'm going to finish the round. And then I have another four rounds 
before I do the second set of decreases. I'm arriving at the end of my fourth round and I'm going to do the second set of decrease. So here is the end of the round and I'm supposed to repeat the same round of decrease. So I'm supposed to knit one knit two together. So I'm doing a slip slip knit. And then I'm supposed to knit three and then knit two together. But to keep the symmetry, I'm going to knit only one and then knit two together. So the decreases are following the same line here instead of being a few stitches apart. So I've done the two sets of decrease for the instep and now I'm going to continue knitting in the round. So I have to knit 20 rounds for the main part of the foot and then I'm going to knit um, the end of the foot for the toes. So I'm going to knit those 20 rounds and I'll take you back later. When I now I'm on the last round of the foot and for my size I am supposed to decrease two stitches and in the pattern it's uh, it's said to evenly spaced evenly space the um, decreases but it doesn't say where so I'm going to make them in the middle here and here because I have two decreases to make um, because that's where the decreases of the toes are gonna be. First decrease and then second decrease. And now I'm at the end of the round. And now I have to distribute the st stitches onto four needles. So what I'm going to do instead is that I'm going to put some stitch markers. The beginning of the round it's is supposed to be in the middle of the instep so and since this is the middle I can knit until the first one I take it off so this is the middle of the instep so I'm going to start here. This is the first half and the second half and I'm going to divide it into two for both of them. First round of decrease and I have to knit until three stitches before the first marker, then knit two together then knit one. Then I'm supposed to knit two together but I'm going to do SSK so it's symmetrical and I knit until the end and then I'm going to do the same on the other side now I'm knitting the second round without any decrease and then I'm going to repeat the first round with the decreases and I'm going to repeat those two rounds until I have 34 stitches on my needle for my size and I'm going to continue and then I'll take you back once I'm done with the repetition of those two rounds. 
now that I'm at the end of the decreases in the pattern, it says that I have to knit two together throughout the whole round. And then for the last round, I have to knit two together once on each needle, so once on each part, like on the four parts. So I'm going to do it right next to the needle, so at the center here, and just again right after the needle and the same on the other side. I need one, knit two together, knit two together again and knit one. And now I can cut the yarn, pass it through the stitches and secure it inside and I'm done for the first foot. and I can secure it inside. Now that I secured the yarn inside, I am done with the first foot. Here it is, Here we, it looks like this. So it's really big. And now I am good to go for the second one. So I can take the stitches back on the needle and do the same on the other foot. The only modification that I'm going to do is that I'm going to um, knit two rows less for the second foot. So the second one is the one that is going to go inside. And so since it's going to be just a tiny bit smaller, it's going to fit perfectly inside and it's not going to be too long. And that's it. I finished the two slippers, so I wanted to show you how it looks like. So here they are, the first one and the second one. So both of them. And so as I said, I made the second foot a little bit smaller, so uh, two rows less. And you can see here that it's just a tiny bit smaller in length and so I'm gonna put it in the washing machine now like this. Um, also I sewed um, the part in between here uh, on both of them and so yeah I'm gonna put them in the washing machine. I'm going to put them at 40 degrees Celsius um, and I'm going to put some towels and maybe some bed sheets um, in it. Uh, so I'll do that. I think I'm gonna put it uh, with a cycle during 30 minutes or so. I'm go going to see what I find on my washing machine and I'll see you when I take them out after the first cycle. I think I'm going to do um, maybe two or three cycles and I'll see how um, that goes every time. And for the first one, I'm going to put it like this. Um, also for the second one, and maybe for the third one, I'm going to put it um, to put the leg, the foot inside the other. So it has a nice shape, but I'm going to start like this. So the felting is um, even on the two parts. And I'll take you back once I take them out of the washing machine. The two slippers are now out of the washing machine and they look like this.
So as you can see, we can still see a little bit um, like the stitches, but it's quite felted, it's nicely felted. So I had to put in to put them uh, into two cycles. So the first one uh, was 15 minutes long and then uh, it was drying. And the second one uh, was 45 minutes long. I didn't have 30 minutes, so I had to, um, to put either uh, 15 minutes or 45 minutes. And um, after the first one, it was pretty much not felted at all. So that's why I went to the second cycle um, that lasts 45 minutes, uh, 40 degrees. I always put stuff in it uh, with it. So some clothes, some towels and stuff like this. Um, and then I did for the drying part, uh, the second part of the cycle, it was 800 turns per minute. I think that's how we say it. Um, because my washing machine couldn't go um, with more turns, but I think that was okay. It's still um, it's still wet, like I can feel it. It's not completely wet. There's no water uh, dripping out of it. I can just feel that it's a, a little bit wet. And so here it is. So since I didn't put uh, a third cycle uh, to felt it more because this is the right side. I didn't get to put the second part inside. Um, I kind of wanted them to uh, felt together so the inside part couldn't be taken out anymore, but that's gonna be okay. And as you can see, we can still see a little bit of size difference. And I'm glad I did it because for the second one, I'm wearing it right now and it fits perfectly inside, but it was a bit hard to put it inside correctly. So um, there's no extra fabric uh, inside, so it's good, but I'm glad that I did that. Um, I also like the fact that I shortened just a tiny bit two rows, so it's not much, but this part here, because it's a little bit smaller and so around my ankle the hole is um, a bit smaller, so it holds um, my ankle a little bit better and the size is good. Um, what else? I'm wearing the second one, so I put a sock um, on my foot, then I put the slipper on and then I put another sock around it so it holds it uh, quite well and I'm going to let it dry a little bit like this maybe for half an hour I'm going to see um, and so it doesn't stretch out too much but it ho holds its um, shape pretty well so what I did is that I took this part I folded it so I'm going to show you it's not the easiest part once it's um, felted and wet but I put the end here and here I tried to make sure that there is no extra fabric, no wrinkle or anything inside so it doesn't bother me when I'll be wearing them. So I try to put them well inside and that it lays flat inside. Here it is. I'm just kind of wondering about the hill here, how it's um, a square shape here uh, because of the cast on. So I'm not sure if it was because of the cast on, but it would have been the same if I had sewn it in. So I don't know. I, 
I can kind of feel it on my heel, like at the bottom of my heel when I'm wearing it. But I hope that it's gonna like with blocking it around my foot and walking a little bit with it. Um, I hope it's gonna be a bit better and it's gonna be a bit more round. So maybe I can try to show you my foot here. <laughs> you won't be able to see my, uh, my slipper around it, but it looks like this. I put a sock inside, um, inside, outside, and it looks like this. So a big foot. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm gonna put it on my foot and show you my foot when I'm only wearing this so you can see how it looks like. And yeah, this is how it looks like once it's shaped. And then I'm going to show them to you once they are completely dry. It's now a few weeks later and the slippers are now finished and dried and um, I wanted to show them to you now. So here they are. So the fit is perfect. The felted is quite nice. As you can see, it was a bit pointy here um, at the at the end here, and it's not anymore. With blocking it um, rounded the the end of the of the slipper, um, the inside is really nice, and it's it fits perfectly. Uh, the size is good, and everything is good about it. So I'm quite happy with it. Um, there are quite a few things I wanted to talk to you about now that I've been wearing them. Um, the first thing is about the yarn choice. So I used uh, a yarn with alpaca in it and they're really soft and um, which doesn't really bother me as I'm wearing them, but I would like them a, a little bit more sturdy. So I think that the next pair that I will make, I will try with a yarn that's 100% wool with no alpaca in it. Um, I, I can never remember exactly the percentage of alpaca that there's um, in this yarn, but I think it's around 30% or 34 maybe, something like that. So quite enough to actually um, feel that there's alpaca in it and that it's very very soft and um, very like kind of drapey. Um, so it's okay, but I would like them to be a bit more sturdy. Uh, so I will try that uh, in the, for the next pair. And also I feel like it's gonna, um, like there are gonna be holes in, uh, in the sole um, quite quickly if I don't put anything underneath uh, the, the slippers so I may try to add um, like a leather sole or something just on those two parts here so um, maybe not at the part where my foot is a bit um, so the, the the foot anatomy is a bit like this so um, here it doesn't really touch the the ground so maybe if I put something underneath here and here at the front and the back it will make it um, last a bit longer. Although I can still uh, re-knit it and uh, close the holes if there are any, but still I, wanted, uh, I want them to be durable, so I might try to add that. Um, they're really comfortable and I like feeling the, the floor underneath my feet. Um, so if I put some sole underneath them, I won't be able to feel everything as um, I I do now but that's okay too um, although they're really slippery so I think that for the ones that I'm gonna make for my son I will have to put something underneath them so uh, it's not as slippery and he doesn't um, 
for all the time when he's running. So I think that's it for this one. And uh, um, I already have my dad asking me to have one pair. So I'm kind of happy when he saw the, those ones um, and that I showed them to him. And he thought it was really nice. And especially to have the, uh, to have the slippers fit the exact um, fit. Um, so for me, for example, they're a bit large. Uh, because I like to 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 be able to um, not to grasp the <laughs> like the, the ground with my um, with my toes, but I like my toes to be able to have a lot of room. So I ensured that it was large enough when I was um, making them dry around my my feet. And so yeah, I'm gonna make um, a second pair of adult size for my dad and. I'm gonna make one for my son too, another pair, and I'm gonna show that to you in um, a regular podcast episode. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this um, this video. I hope that it was useful and that you could learn some things. Um, it was my first pair, so of course not everything was um, very easy for my for me to do. It was also discovering things and how to felt and how to knit slippers like this for me but I hope that you enjoyed it and that it was useful for you and I will see you in the next podcast episode. Bye!